Hello, I'm Xie Zhe. I come from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and today I will introduce our latest methods about sequential recommendation.、Uh, in this paper, adversarial and contrastive variational autoencoder for sequential recommendation.、Uh, for recommendation, there are lots of methods like matrix factorizing and PPR and so on. One of the main concerns about recommendation is that Uh, users' interests are changing over time, and most of the classic recommender systems are not able to capture the dynamic changes of interest.、Uh, so, in this paper, we mainly focus on this point that it's sequential recommendation. Sequential recommendation models the temporal dependencies of the items,、uh, so dynamic changes of interest can be captured by sequential recommendation models. So let's. First, have a look at some approaches to sequential recommendation. The first one is、uh, FPMC, factorizing personalized Markov chain.、Uh, FPMC uses Markov chain to capture the sequence information, but、uh, because of the inherent limitation of、uh, Markov chain, it is not possible to model long-term sequence information. The next one is RN.、Uh, Since FPMC is not、uh, able to model the long-term sequence information, so some methods use RN to model the long-term sequence information.、Mm, however, RN-based methods may ignore some short-term sequential patterns. So in some datasets, they may even worse than FPMC. And there are also some methods、uh, that use attention mechanisms.、Uh, so Uh, with self-attention, we can model the global relationship.、Uh, however, in some datasets with long sequence、uh, lengths, the calculation may very heavy. So,、uh, the last one is、uh, variation autoencoder, and、uh, this paper will mainly focus on this VAE.、Uh, in VAE, the Features are modeled with latent variables, and the good result can still be obtained in high sparse datasets.、Uh, so let's have a look.、Uh, there are already some research that use uh, VAE uh, for recommendation. However, in sequential recommendation, we need to obtain the latent variables containing the temporal dynamic information, and this requires higher quality of latent variables. Uh, however, due to the limitations of VAE in sequential recommendation, VAE did not show significant effect. So our first goal is to inference high quality latent variables with VAE, and this requires that latent variables、uh, have more personalized features. And、uh, we also need the encoder can、uh, be able to model both long term and short term dependencies. So in this paper, we propose ACVAE to tackle these problems. The basis of ACVAE is variational autoencoder (VAE).、Uh, this is actually based、uh, on generative model, like this.、Uh, that is,、uh, this is an observable variable x, and、uh, it has conditional probability about the latent variable z. In recommended systems, x is the item, and we need to infer the latent variable z according to the item x. So variational inference method is employed in VAE.、Uh, in VAE, the approximate posterior distribution of z、uh, is defined as conditional independent Gaussian distribution, and、uh, the mu and sigma of the Uh, distribution is、uh, inferenced by the neural network. So the goal of A is to maximize this. That is the evidence lower bound, E L B O. The first term is the expectation of log likelihood、uh, of the of X. Yes, and the right term is the KL divergence between the、uh, posterior distribution and the prior distribution of C. And the prior distribution
uh, of the latent variable in the, is usually normal distribution, uh, normal Gaussian distribution. So where is uh, actually a simple model which is conditional independent Gaussian as is approximate uh, approximate posterior distribution. But in our sequential recommendation task, uh, we need latent variables with higher quality. So the limitation of Gaussian posterior distribution will also limit the expressiveness of the latent variable. So that's reduce the performance of the VAE model for sequential recommendation. Uh, fortunately, there is another framework that is AVB, Adversary uh, Variation of Bias, which combines adversary learning with variation of encoder. AVB removes the limitation of uh, the cause and posterior distribution. So if we use the framework of AVB, in sequential elimination, the approximate posterior distribution will no longer be a simple Gaussian distribution, but a more complex distribution like this. Uh, so let's see how AVB works. Uh, so this, uh, the above distribution, this uh, is the approximate posterior posterior distribution in VA and the below one is the uh, one in AVB. Uh, when optimizing VAE and AVB, well, we are only concerned about the evidence lower bound. And uh, as we has this we have discussed before, uh, the left term of evidence lower bound is the expectation of the log likelihood. And that can be uh, calculated directly. However, the right term, the KO divergence, cannot be calculated directly. Uh, since uh, we don't know the expression of this complex uh, distribution, uh, so here we need another discriminator T, which takes X and Z as input and uh, to approximate the KO divergence. And uh, the goal of optimizing the discriminity uh, is like this. And we can also find uh, that the, in AVB, when the t is optimized, the value of t uh, is exactly the value of the KL divergence between the approximate posterior distribution uh, and the prior distribution. So the goal is like this. Which uh, just uh, substitute uh, the marginal K, uh, term into the t. So the go to of AB is just like this. And now it comes to our sequential model. Uh, in normal recommended systems, which use uh, normal autoencoders. Uh, a latent variable at time step t only corresponds to the item at time step t. But in our sequential model, a latent variable at time step t uh, corresponds to the previous items from uh, time step 1 to time step t. So the approximate posterior distribution can be factorized as this. And this is the sequential model for predicting the next item. And for sequential AVB model, we need to obtain the evidence lower bound for a whole sequence. Mm -hmm. Since the likelihood term uh, can be factorized to different time steps, so we can sum them up to get the log likelihood uh, like this. And T is defined as a discriminator, which takes a whole sequence as input and output as sequence with the same learns. So we can also sum them up. So that is the evidence lower bound for sequential AVB. And the next term is the uh, uh, the objective function for the discriminator t. And that is the sequential AV model for recommendation. And then, uh, as we have discussed before, LSTM GRU are usually employed in sequential, uh, sequential recommendation to capture the long-term dependencies, but uh, they may not be good at uh, capture the 
short-term dependencies in the sequence. So here we, uh, we also employed a 1D convolutional layer to further capture the short-term dependencies. So another thing we want to do uh, is to encode more personalized and salient users' features into the latent variables. So here we introduce contrastive loss. And the pair X and Z comes from the same user is defined as positive pair. And from uh, different users is defined as negative pair. And then we uh, want to use another discriminator G to distinguish between those two kinds of pairs. And so we define the contrastive loss. The contrastive loss can be written as this. Uh, so this can be added to the objective functions of the previous sequential AVB. Uh, and minimizing the contrastive loss, the encoder can inform more personalized latent variables. So we can obtain uh, latent variables with higher quality. And that uh, is our model. Uh, the input sequence, input sequence X are sent to the GRU and the CNN, and the latent variables uh, uh, are sent to the discriminator G and T, and they are trained alternatively. And uh, one thing we need to notice is that uh, we also need to add a noise epsilon into the input so we can obtain the uh, latent variables with a complex dispu distribution. So this is our model. And uh, for experiments, we also choose for, for widely uh, used data sets in recommendation. And these data sets have different sizes uh, and different average sequence lengths and different sparsities. Uh, so we conduct our experiments with uh, those baselines, uh, including the FPMSC and ARM-based, uh, attention-based, GAN-based, uh, VLE-based methods. Uh, and this is these are our results. Uh, we, and we can see that. Uh, our model shows great improvement in almost all of the metrics in all of the four data sets. That is ML latest, ML1M, and ML10M, and YAP. And in order to show the key role of each part of SVA, we also have ablation study uh, to test the performance of model without CNN and without contrastive loss and without uh, AVB, uh, respectively. Uh, the red one is the curve of ACVAE, and the training curves are shown here. And we can see that uh, all of the key parts in our model contribute to the final performance of, of ACVAE. That's great. Uh, OK, finally, we also explore the effect of different uh, parameters in our model. That is alpha and beta, which uh, stand for the weight of T in MVB and the contrastive weight of contrastive loss uh, in our model. Uh, the results of ML1M are shown here. And we can see that uh, almost all of the lines reach the peak when alpha is 0 0.05. And we also find that uh, when beta is 0 0.3, our model shows the highest value. So from this, we can also confirm that both AVB time and contrastive loss uh, have certain effect on the results. And we, all, we can also find uh, the most suitable value for alpha and beta through this grid search. And that's all of my presentation. Thank you very much.